smooth. It's not slimy like most people think. Okay. No, you don't have to be afraid. Very gentle. They're very gentle. They don't do much. They're very calm. Do I want to keep it? Of yeah. course I want to keep it. I want to take all of them. Oh, Monitors because they're they're different. A lot of people don't understand them, yeah. and I've had um, large monitor lizards for the majority of my life. All animals can be dangerous if they're in the wrong hands. So to take risk of, of learning how to control the animal in, in certain senses, you know, you can pretty much tell. Um, they give you signs if they're if they're mad and and if they're not. You know, you got to pay attention to the animal. It's just experience. Experience helps a long way. I think they make fantastic pets. This one in particular, I really, really like. They just look so beautiful. It can be more of a hobby rather than the type of relationship of love that you would feel with a dog or a cat. But over time, you do grow to love your snakes and your spiders, but it's a different kind of love. Most of our parents kind of teach us, you know, stay away from snakes, stay away from spiders. But I think I had to just grow up a little bit and realize that, you know, they all need love. Everyone has a niche and yeah, I decided. I'm like, I'm not going to be afraid. the eastern indigo snake. It's a native of the United States, in, primarily in Florida and also in Georgia. And it's a, a threatened species, so it's protected by the United States Endangered Species Act. One of the reasons this snake is endangered is because people kill them oh, yeah. out of fear. Yeah. And snakes, uh, these are super friendly snakes, even in the wild you can pick them up and they won't bite. Yeah. Um, and snakes, snakes do a lot of good for the environment. It's the friendliest and the most intelligent of all snakes, in my opinion. Uh, it's the one snake that bonds to its owner, like a dog or a cat would. Yeah. Recognize you, oh, really? and it will want to want to be held, okay. and want to come towards you and find you, climb out into your arms when you open the cage. This is an Aldabra tortoise from the Seychelles Islands. This animal is four years old. It's still a baby. It's a young juvenile. Um, we've been keeping large tortoises, Aldabras and Galapagos tortoises for the last 15 years. Uh, we have a herd of seven Galapagos tortoises as well as Aldabra tortoises. One of the most, with raising giant tortoises, they get upwards of four to 500 pounds. So space is everything. Um, we have four acres for our tortoises to roam. So they need, they require a lot of space. They need different climate zones from hot basking areas to cooler soaking areas where they could enjoy a nice bath, climb in a water, a big water hole. Um, but yeah, one, one of the biggest issues with them is uh, breeding, breeding animals that might not have the best genetics to them. So breeding sick animals together will obviously make sick babies. Um, Unlike the Galapagos tortoise, Aldabra tortoises, this is Cites Appendix 2, um, which means it could stand, to, it could cross state lines without proper CBW, captive bred wildlife permits. 
Um, I think it's good. Uh, it is a CITES 2, CITES Appendix 2 animal. That way, people who have the means and the space to breed them can breed them and offer captive bred animals. That way they're not being exported and smuggled into the United States. So it takes a lot of the pressure off of the wild population. If we could legally breed them in the States and transfer state lines to sell them to other people in the States who could keep them. This is Naswada. She is a Kenyan sand boa. They're native to East Africa and she is my pet. She is a year and a half old and I've known her since she was born. That's why I love her. <laughs> she is fed once a week on frozen thawed mice. So you take a frozen mouse and you thaw it in hot water and then you feed it to her. Uh, she will grow to be about three feet long and this thick. Not poisonous nor venomous. Yeah. Uh, she's never even bitten me, so yeah, yeah, yeah. there's so. no toxins whatsoever. Oh. My mom is a huge fan of. Oh, really? oh yeah, she loves her, and my sisters all love her except for one who is still a little shy of snakes. I understand that a lot of people have phobia of snakes, so that's something that can't quite be helped. There's a lot of misconception about snakes being incredibly dangerous, but I find that it is actually the opposite. They're really important to the environment and they prefer to stay away from people rather than actually attack anyone. And so some of them will make great pets, especially if they're born in captivity. As you can see, she handles being petted very well. Here, the male is in the back and the female is right up here. Yeah, so this is a four foot by two foot by two foot cage. She's really interactive. She'll come up to my hand if I put my hand in the cage. Oh, good. <laughs> Made out all out of wood and sealed. And you can see I have a humidity gauge and a temperature gauge in the back of the cage as well. Uh, Dubia roaches yeah. with calcium. <coughs> And he just got it. Oh, yeah. They haven't eaten today, so I... Hope for them. Yep. And they, they, the plan is that for her to lay her eggs in here. Oh, yeah. Because usually you, if you could either have a box or have about a foot, or, a foot or more of substrate so they can lay in there. But I don't want my cage to bottom out because it's all made of wood. Yes. So I, uh, I just have that box in there. I See? think they really like it. They really like that. Yeah, they, uh, they sleep in there most of the time. See, she is really interactive. My name is Terry Wilkins. I'm owner of Captive Born Reptiles. Uh, I have stores in Columbus, Ohio and Newport, Kentucky and what we do here is we captive breed animals for sale. Uh, most pet stores around the world are still selling animals that people have taken from the wild. We do not take animals from the wild and sell them. We captive breed them and sell the babies. So the python that I'll show you is called a reticulated python. It's the planet's second largest snake. They can get up to 34 feet long. 34, Three, four, 34 feet long. The only snake that gets bigger is the giant green anaconda. They can get to 37 and a half feet long. But this snake here is found in southern China. And this snake comes up into Hong Kong. Now this snake is an albino. So this is not the normal coloration. But it is an albino, so it's primarily yellow and white. Normally, it would be grays and browns, but this snake is probably about four years old. Four years old? Yeah. There are over 100 different types of true chameleons. This particular chameleon is the panther chameleon, which is 
from Madagascar off the southeast coast of Africa. And this is a full-grown male. Well, these chameleons right now aren't, the panther chameleon isn't one of the highly endangered species. Yeah. Eventually they will be, as everything else will be. But right now uh, they aren't uh, threatened in Madagascar, and Madagascar is still allowing the wild capture and exportation of this animal, um, which should be severely restricted. Uh, this animal was captive born and bred, and we are able to produce uh, far more panther chameleons in this country than the market would demand. So really, uh, there is no need to bring in large numbers of panthers. I already have species within my house that are extinct in the wild. Uh, I have about five wolf first breedings. I breed animals that no zoo in this, on this planet has ever bred before. If they want one of these animals, they have to come to me. I do not like my animals falling in the hands of most zoos because I'm concerned about them receiving proper care. So the bottom line is, is that if people in the private sector aren't doing the work that we are currently doing, then many of these species will just simply go extinct because our zoos are falling down as far as what their mission should be. Our zoos are a little bit better than amusement parks and most of them provide not much better care for their animals than your average pet store. My name is Randy Lee. I've worked with reptiles for well over 20 years, both as a hobbyist and a professional. My professional life with them started about five years ago. I've chose to hone my skills in reptiles alone because there is a big undiscovered uh, cognitive ability research that we can do here with them and make people understand them more as pets than absolute just wild animals. So I've kind of focused my cognitive and captive ability on that. It's six o'clock. You need the time. Yes. Still see the head shaking of decision making. Kiss. Good girl. Now, because that took so long, we don't reward that. So we show it again. Kiss. That's kind of how that goes. This is a rhino iguana. Her name is Darla. She's about six years old. She's been with us the better part of four years. And we got her because the man thought that she was aggressive. That's not the case. It is a very self-aware species. It is a species that understands uh, harm. It understands uh, pre predictions. It, 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 it thinks about what you're going to do. Wait. Kiss. 100 watt ball. There we go. The second thing that we start is not only kiss, but go. Go! Go! Good girl. So during a positive reinforcement training, go! You add things that it enjoys when it does the right thing. Kiss! See that force of motion makes her go quicker to do the kiss because it's more of a routine. Go! So reticulated pythons are a big reason that people have one of the number one or number two phobias in the world, meaning afraid of snakes. Uh, it has been seen in very small amount of media, but has in fact been seen that this predator will take on a human. This is the species alone that makes us afraid of an animal sizing us up to eat us. That is a myth. It cannot size you up to eat you. It cannot grow out of thin air to eat and consume a prey item. They do not open their mouth while they're looking at you to see if they can fit you in it. But in fact, it would opportunistically, as a very high arousal, 
predator grab and attempt to consume a person small enough to do so. I am not small enough for this animal to attempt to consume. There is no way that head could get around my shoulders. But it should still, in fact, be something to be leery about while handling. As a professional, I have people standing right behind me or near me to be able to help me with this animal if and when it got ornery or highly aroused. It is never safe to be handling a snake this large and this strong alone. So when you have a captive snake, much like your dog does not eat wild chickens outside, it does not need to eat it live. We do not usually recommend you to use your hand because the snake with its high arousal can jump right over its food item and grab you. During that process, its high arousal will make it wrap your hand and that can be painful at times. All that being said, I've done this since I was six and it is perfectly fine. So what we do is we immediately put it in front of their face, grab and wrap. And if you want the enrichment to make your animal actually think it has something, just give it a couple tugs. A long since dead rat is now completely consumable by the predator that needs to eat it. And it didn't grab and scratch your snake like it could like this. It didn't bite the inside of the mouth like it could here. It didn't do any of those things to spook your good friend of a snake. Here, smell food, eat food. So what we have here are red-footed tortoises. And for me, personally, to sell a pet that is reptilian to a person that has never had a reptile before, after going and working with many different species of tortoise, I personally find them to be more of a sense of a community. It learns tricks as well as uh, husbandry training quicker, more than most. They can be integrated in a large group better than most. Uh, overall very hardy and they eat the most vast diet so it's fun to feed them. They can eat your proteins like eggs and fish and snail meat and other things like that but mainly their diet is focused around a vast variety of fruits and vegetables. These two guys are both 53 and well over 50 unknown age. They have been with the owner at our store, with our store for 30 plus years. I don't know the exact age because they were around way before I was. Here we have Tosk and his un unnamed female. They are both northern caiman lizards. They are from northern South America, so Guiana, uh, French Guiana, etc., the northern parts by the equator. They're both about five years old. Yes, absolutely. All less, um, I do also, I don't have them right now, but I do have quail. Both captive bred. <laughs> and extremely friendly, capable of understanding a sense of community with a person in our diet. They'd eat other gastropods in the wild, but they hand eat snail that's already cooked for them right out of our hands, which I can actually display right here. In the wild, they would actually crack the whole shell and remove the whole shell with their specialized molars and tongue. Take it very nicely because we do work on their attitude and arousal level, not only their husbandry as a reptile. He is five years old. He's not my first. He is one of the first larger lizards that I personally have worked with passionately uh, side by side with. My first personal reptile was a ball python or a royal python, uh, how they call it in the rest of the world. And she 
passed a long time ago after old age. That was when I was six, so that was 21 years ago. And she passed a long time ago. So, yep. So he is probably my best friend, if not next to best friend, on four legs. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good guy, for sure. My name is Doug Duvall. I am the owner of Grove City Reptiles. I think they definitely, a lot of reptiles, especially like the rhinoceros iguana, um, they will bond with a certain owner. Um, some are not so much. You know, some are like cats where they don't really care. And some are like dogs where they, you know, they like their owners and they like to be around people. They're more social, like bearded dragons. They're very social animals. Um, so it all depends on the reptile itself but some are very much like that. Any other animal, there are vicious dogs and there are, are not vicious dogs. Uh, same thing in the reptiles. There are vicious snakes, you know, there are, are docile snakes. It's all, all about learning the education and learning about uh, how to handle them, how to take care of them, you know, and how to respond if they do become like that. Um, rhinoceros iguanas are a perfect example. Um, there are actually more in captivity and being and bred in captivity than there are left in the wild. Uh, and we are a big, we have rhinoceros iguanas. Um, we try to promote the captivity breeding of them um, because in the wild they're being eaten and they're almost gone, they're almost extinct. I believe captive bred animals is, is extremely important. Um, in fact, you know, most private people breed rare animals more than zoos do. <laughs> so, and I think a lot of that is because we could focus a lot of time and energy on one species versus multiple species. Um, but you know, once, once you have a captive bred animal, captive bred animals, they tend to re repropagate a lot easier than a wild animal. So once you have captive bred, it's easier for, to breed captive bred versus wild caught. Um, so in sense, if more people have them and they're all captive bred animals, we'll continue to breed a lot of them, which will keep people from smuggling them in the wild. Off the top of my head, I can't tell you their IUCN red list. Uh, status right now but at one point they were endangered that changes every year um, we don't actually like to deal with wild caught specimens because we also care for conservation we care for species not to be abruptly taken out of their home uh, we care about the animal being just as comfortable as the person purchasing the animal so here at this store actually we prize ourselves with captive born and bred animals as well as making sure the animal is properly enriched enough in the home it's going to it's not just to make the person happy. So I'm going to travel around the world. I've been through 20 different countries, catching different snakes and turtles and other reptiles to bring back in captive breed. Um, what it boils down to is if we don't bring these animals into captivity and captive breed them, many of them will just go extinct. Humans are destroying this planet, and what we do not bring in and preserve in captivity will just simply disappear. I'm Zhu Tong, my name is Wang Ming, called RLYL.
，我是 TS 爬魂的创始人，也是本次片的剪辑和摄影。我是本次纪录片的发起人和策划人。呃，我是本次纪录片的外联制片。呃，负责拍摄在美国部分的全程协助与执行，就是策划了这么一个呃国爬征程的一个项目。这一次的美国去拍的这个纪录片，我们大多数采访到的其实也是一个普通的民众。那嗯，他们也是出于自己自发的对动物的热爱和对动物的钻研，所以会去做繁殖和饲养这样一件事情。呃，往往他们做的呢，其实会比。呃，专所谓的专家做得更好。我相信大家曾经在媒体上都看到过这样的消息，比如一一个箭毒蛙的毒液可以毒死呃几几匹马这样子。呃，实际上它的毒液并没有到这种程度。事实上，人工的箭毒蛙并没有任何毒性。箭毒蛙的毒性其实是来源于它在野外吃到的有毒的虫子。呃，野外捕获的箭毒蛙在人工饲养的六个月之后也会消失毒性，所以我们可能希望这些。误区可以得到大家的重新的认识，因为呃前几年看到呃一些像呃海关，或者是或者是呃呃一些报道吧，他们他们所描述的那些呃名字，这名字是最基本的一个东西，他们所描述的名字和和那些物种都都不不搭配。我觉得这个就是一个落后。包括野保法，其实呃是不区分人工和野外捕获的概念。那么呃，像一些新闻里所说到的，比如说某某大学生他私自去饲养了一个蟒蛇这样一个情况，呃，实际上他手上的嗯蟒蛇并不是一个野生的概念，而是一个人工的结果。区分野生动物和人工动物其实是一个刻不容缓的问题，只有大家都参与。这些动物的保护和繁殖啊，我们身边的物种才会呃不那么快的灭绝。我们国家爬虫爱好者基数完全不输于欧美，并且爬虫文化在我们国家这几年正在兴起。呃，从今年开始吧，二零一六年应该算是中国爬虫展的一个元年，因为之前确实呃从来没有这么就是史无前例没有这么大规模这么呃多人参与的这么一个爬虫展会的形式。而今年的那个，从三月份是在广州，是咱们中国爬虫展的第一届，也是咱们就是有史以来的，就是就是前所未有的这么第一次爬虫商家、玩家、爱好者集聚一堂的这么一次盛会。呃，之后呢，我们就是也是趁热打铁，然后呢，把这个爬虫展呢，在全国各地也是在逐步的去推广开来。那么五月份呢，我们是在北京举办了这个中国爬虫文化节的第一场，呃，七月份呢是在大连是中国爬虫文化节，然后九月份呢是在武汉和南京，分别是在武汉叫爬虫展销会，在南京呢也是爬虫文化节，因为我们是有不同的主题、不同的形式去推广这种爬虫的展示文化，呃，然后呢，今年的十一月份我们又在那个广州继续又一次举办了这个中国爬虫的文化节。可以说每一次呢都是非常成功的，但是呢，那个我们也希望就是，呃，随着以后再再继续努力吧，把这个中国爬展越做得越来越规模越来越大，也越来越专业。呃，希望所有的人可以正视所有的动物。呃，动物其实并不分所谓的善恶、美丑等等，因为这些词都是人类强加给他们的概念。那其实每一种动物它都值得你的关心和爱护。Jai China。加油 ，China！ 加油 ，China！ 加油 ，China！ 加油 ，China！ 加油，国爬！加油，国爬！加油，国爬！加油，国爬！